Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Brando Diambo from Shofco. I lead governance and advocacy. Um, a quick one, I won't speak on behalf of Shofco, but I'll speak on behalf of myself as a citizen of this nation, as a woman, and as a youth in this nation. My first question will be directed to Honorable Pasaris uh, in concern to the Finance Act and Accord 1212-333-300 of the sanitary towels. The money allocated for the sanitary towels is 15 million towels, targeting 3.4 million girls for the financial year 2024-2025 which is inadequate as it equates to one sanitary towel per girl per quarter, which we understand that for us women, we, we have our menstrual cycle every month. Uh, one of my recommendations to that, and I'd love that you spread this to our fellow women representative at the National Assembly, if we can have an additional budgetary allocation for 30 million sanitary towels, and uh, provide a monetary figure in the budget for the allocated sanitary towels. If NGAF fails to supplement this figure, we'll have a reduction in the number of girls missing schools or experiencing exploitation, whereby it's sex for part scenario. Another instance which I'll request maybe for amendment, though I know it will create a lot of tension and debate. Um, us as youth, we have a lower number of representation at the National Assembly. Uh, can we get to a scenario where people will be going to the polling station and vote youth in power? Can us youths come together and amplify our voices in a reasonable way, the way women in this nation came and had their slot at the National Assembly at the women representative? Can we youth have our space in this nation whereby in the elections to come, as people are voting for the president, governors, and MP, we'll have a slot for youth, whereby the people vying will be 18 to 35 years according to the Constitution of Kenya. Because they keep on telling us that we youths are the leaders of tomorrow. When is that tomorrow? When the government has not even allocated funds for our youths who are at the TVET scholarships, for their exit transition. A lot of youths are getting into drugs and crime. When the Vision 2030 will be approaching, then the youths cannot be that leader. So for us, we believe that we youths are the leaders of today. What is our slot at the National Assembly? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much, Brenda, for very good questions. Mwishimua Wandai is itching to rush here, <laughs> I wanted to invite Bwana Maliba before you. If you are employed in formal employment and being taxed in your company, stand up. Formal employment. That means if you work for Coca-Cola or you work for a shop like maybe Dickens or you work somewhere, if you're in formal employment and you're taxed, uh, you're, you have a pay slip, a monthly pay, stand up so all of you are hustlers okay okay no go on stand up yeah I was wondering Lazarus haven't you got paid okay all right <laughs> okay so basically less than one percent of the room have a seat now this is something I want to tell you there is no country that can run without money and the money can come from two places, taxation or debt. Debt is not the way to go. It is so expensive and we can't afford it. So I'm in the housing committee. When you, go, when you join parliament, parliament puts you, your party puts you in committees. You are asked, which committee do you want to be? I asked to be in housing and lens and budget. What I didn't know is that they had split housing and lens and budget is the hot seat. So I was put in housing and lens. I didn't get into budget. Now, I'm a member of the housing committee. 
And the housing committee, you know, we've been talking about housing forever. We had housing in the Ministry of Transport as just a department. All the money was going into roads. I felt that if we had a tax on housing and the money should be used specifically for housing, we will get rid of informal settlements in our country. It is a shame that in this country, Kenya, you have super malls like Village Market, Westgate, Super Highway, like the Express Highway, you know? You've got big, big towering buildings for UAP and Buckless Bank and Coca-Cola, you know? You've got mesonets in one acre land, mansions that are costing three, four million dollars, and then all the workers who work in all these fancy buildings, who go for sightseeing in Westgate or Junction, right? Are living in a four-roomed Mabati house and send at the bottom, all right? When there's a fire, I'm Mama County. I'm the one who's called for those fires. I'm given one million shillings a year for fires in Nairobi. I can only solve one fire. One million, fire, disaster, that's it. I have to go around begging people for money for fires. You have one fire, she loses everything. We have, I have seen women, bodies picked from a chard, like charcoal, I'm a kufa hapo. Why? Because the house burnt down. I do not believe that anybody in the capital city of Nairobi should live in a tin Mabati house. They should not. And for that, you're not the ones who are going to pay that housing levy. That housing levy is going to be paid by the employed. But you know what's going to happen? You're the ones who will be going for mandamano to stop yourselves from getting the money to do what? To give you those houses. You'll be called and you'll go for mandamano. You will be shot. You will die. And let me tell you, I have not seen anybody from the post-election violence up to today who has been compensated. So for me, I realized one thing. If I want to be sincere, right? Let there be a tax specifically for housing. And you know when Mwishmiwa Kalonzo Musioka said that the first thing he'll do when he becomes president is to remove the housing tax. I believe that if he ever becomes president, nobody will allow him to remove that housing tax if the government performs. I have been in Nairobi and we have commissioned over 45,000 housing units. We need 200,000 housing units just in Nairobi alone every year. And those housing units, I know, people are saying, maskini hata pata, hasla hata pata. This is where I come in. In that, in that committee of housing, they put 30% for slum upgrading and social housing. Then they put 30% for institutional, 40% for affordable and low cost. So affordable and low cost is supposed to be charged more. It's supposed to be bigger and better so that we can provide the social through the profits. But now that we have a tax, we can be able to say, let's make 50% social. I recently was fighting for civil servants because civil servants are going to pay the housing tax. And I found out recently that somebody bought a house from civil servants and he was charged 2.6 in Mwavoko. And somebody else bought a house from social and he was charged 1.3. So I decided to go and look at those two houses. They were identical. So I asked, why should a civil servant pay double so that the, the hustler can get a house? It's not fair. And the house is the same. So even if you were going to charge more, and I took on the president during the Labor Day. I told him, Mr. President, look into this thing. Because I went to Hinga, he didn't listen. I went to civil servants' offices, they didn't listen. I told them, listen, you guys, you're not going to charge civil servants double for the same house. If you're going to give him any charge more, you give him maybe 50% more, but you give him a bigger house and a better house. Housing can create a lot of opportunity for us from the making of the doors, from the making of the windows, from the making of uh, the, the tiles, and a lot of employment opportunities. Engineers, contractors, you name it. I hope investors will come in and help us out. And I hope and pray 
that the president will be sincere and make sure that housing has zero corruption so that we can actually eliminate the slums because we really need to. I know that right now there's a lot of tension in Nairobi. All right? And I shall be visiting a lot of these demolition sites. Okay? Because I think there's a plan to do the Nairobi River regeneration. It looks beautiful, but we've displaced a lot of people. We need solutions for them. For me, the 10K is not enough. They need to be given more because already they are displaced. Some of them even didn't have time to take their furniture out. Now, 2024, I'm not happy with a number of things. I went, I am not in the budget committee, but I went to the public participation in Nairobi. I went to the one in um, Dagoretti, the one in Embakasi. I sat through the public participation on the budget committee, and I'm not in the budget committee. And I was the only woman that was there. Okay? Beatrice Elachi had, had, was committed, so she was not able to come. And I thought to myself, here we're discussing budget. Let me go and listen to what the men and the women are going to talk about, especially issues women. The issue of Linda Mama came. I've actually put in, a, 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 what you call it? I've already uh, lobbied, uh, done, what is it that I've done? Lazarus, where is it gone? I put in, I put in what? A memorandum here. Yeah skipped my head i came from the u.s yesterday so i'm so jet legged i should be in bed sleeping so um but i decided i have to come here you know no i didn't go with a private jet and i wasn't in atlanta and i wasn't on the president's tour i went for a spiritual nourishment okay so now um now and i didn't pay it with taxpayers money now i put in a memorandum for three issues i put in one for the school feeding program I want the children given food. I don't care about the differences between local gov uh, county government and national government. I just want our children to get food. When it comes to sanitary towels, I want our children in public, private, community, and mission-based schools to all get sanitary towels. I've been singing this song from the time I joined. We only give public, all right? It cannot be, that it, it, it needs to be even more than 30 million, all right? But the thing is, we don't have women to push it. The budgets are done by men. So put more women in parliament so we can get more sanitary towels, we can get diapers for our children, we can get infant, infant uh, uh, food for the mothers. There's so much we can do. All right, but we need more women to articulate these issues. All right, I also am not happy about the money moving from education. I'm not happy about the cuts in vaccination. I'm not happy about the cuts in um, the cuts in the wages. We just came back from a strike of doctors, and then you're cutting the the wages in health. So if we have to cut, I'm very clear. We don't need to renovate any of the state houses this year. We don't need to increase any more money for the executive officers. They've been okay with the money they've had. We don't even need to increase money in parliament. They've given us an increase of three billion. Let us put the money to feed our children, to put more sanitary towels, to make sure we have vaccinations, because I hear we have a shortage of vaccinations already, to make sure that uh, we create job opportunities, industries. You know, the, the Jojoikali industry, let me tell you, when I went to the Jawakali industry and I saw the way they were working because I gave them a job to do some wheelbarrows and some um, um, cocotennis for me. Do you know the conditions under which they work? Most of them are going to be blind by the time they are old because of the sparks without the proper goggles. Most of them are going to have Parkinson's disease because they are smoking the fumes. My father had Parkinson's, he worked in a shipyard, and the welding, 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 he got Parkinson's. Okay, so for me, I feel that we need proper industries. We need to take that Juakali industry and give it all the necessary machinery, give it the partners to be able to do things properly. We need to make sure we don't import anything. Our partners in the East can help us with those industries. We've got to make it lucrative. There's a lot of work to do. Now, you're going to ask me. Thank you. How am I going to vote in 2024, uh, the, the finance bill? Okay. So, let's just say, first of all, you know, my, my vote will not count. It will not make a difference. It will not make a difference. All right? It will not make a difference because the government has the majority. All right? The government has the majority. So, they can pass it without my vote. All right? They can pass it without my vote. So, for me, for me, for order, me, order what, is most, what is most important 
is if they have done the amendments that I have asked and they have improved on the budget reduction and they have improved on a number of issues on the bill, right? That I feel are important, right? Then I will support it. But if they don't improve on the finance bill, improve on the budget, because you see, we're going for public participation and you're all speaking your minds and your hearts. So when you speak your minds and your heart, the idea of public participation is that we listen. And if we don't listen, that means we don't need to have public participation. We're wasting your time and we're, we're pretending to care. So I'm really hoping that the budget committee will reduce and increase where necessary, as said by the people of Kenya. That's and I also pray that the finance committee will listen and reduce wherever they're supposed to reduce so that we can together build a country that is prosperous for everyone. Thank you. Shukran. Asante sana, Mweshimiwa.